Go ahead. Jennings is working on the side field. Did he have any issues? He just had a little tightness. We're being safe with him. Tightness. Same with BA, both of them, same boat. What's the thought process behind that last drill that you guys do? 11 on 11, no helmets. Just trying to ease them into that. Um, something that I never wanted to do. Um, we did a last year to have them ease into going slower. We'll eventually put those helmets on though so no one busts their face up. But just making sure guys learn how to use their hands. When you're, when you're evaluating quarterbacks this early in OTAs, are you judging off of timing, accuracy, footwork? What, what do you really look at? Um, timing, accuracy, where the ball should go, what play they have, um, who makes the consistent right play the most. Um, who plays the most realistically that gives you the chance to win. How did, how did, uh, Trey and Sam do for the most part? I think they've had two days. I thought they've, they've done a great job. Um, you know, we're just putting our base stuff in on offense and defense, and um, that has been two real good days for them. Has Trey been getting all the first team snaps? Um, I think he did for today and yesterday. Um, so far, yeah, he has. But it, that, no, it'll, it'll even out. We'll make sure to get that right. Veterans got different ideas of whether they you know, should be here and work at OTAs. And the first team is kind of funny because there's no line out there, and um, most of our receivers are second and third team on the first team today. So I'm curious what everyone thinks first and second and third team is. <laughs> uh, the snap, yeah, he was out there the first snap. Veterans have different ideas whether they should be out here or not. You guys sure don't mind as long as they're taking care of their business away from here. But when you have a guy like McCaffrey, who's out there setting a pretty torrid pace for a, for an OTA, it appeared, what does that do for the rest of the team? Um, I mean, not just um, Christian, but I mean, the majority of our players. Uh, that's I think it's been rare that we have had guys miss. So I think we do as good of that as most teams. Um, but yeah, it's huge. It's, it's a voluntary thing. So you sit there and you, I mean, it is what it is. But I think it's really hard to practice football compared to other sports. Um, we got a lot of rules that don't allow you to practice football. Um, so it's very good if guys can prepare to practice so they got a chance to get better. And um, it's cool, all the guys who try to work with that. Reference with Trey in the, in the past, the, that finger injury kind of how slowed his development a little bit. Where is he now in terms of being you know, kind of far away from, removed from that? And how much did it impact his first couple of years? I think it impacted him a ton because he had adjusted during the season just to be able to get through and adjust how. You know, he was healthy, but it didn't heal healthy. Um, so he had to change how he played in the middle of the year um, while mainly taking scout team reps and being prepared as a number two, except for a couple games. Um, so in the, going to the off season, have to recorrect that. I think it took him all off season. Um, so he worked at recorrecting that throughout the whole off season. And then he was just thrown into practice with us. Um, going into this year, that was corrected um, throughout last year, his grip and everything. And um, so I thought he got to go in this time with his time away, just he knew what he had to focus on. He, he had known what he had struggled with. He had known what he had done good with. He'd gotten to see two different quarterbacks playing our offense two different ways. And I just think his time away he was a lot more deliberate and in a position where he knew what he could isolate on, which I think helped him compared to last year. That was an ongoing thing even up to like week one of last season? Uh, no, I think when you spend four months trying to recorrect, I mean, everything's about muscle memory and stuff and how you develop things through repetition. And when you throw a certain way for an entire football season adjusting because of how a finger feels that becomes your muscle memory. It takes a while to correct that. Um, you got to work and isolate on just that for a long time. And there's a lot of other stuff you need to isolate on besides that, um, which allows you not to do that other stuff. So I think he spent most of his time working on a grip and things like that, trying to get it back, which um, is usually a prerequisite. But because of his circumstances, he got in that. Um, so he was just late to working on the other things this year. He went into this offseason knowing exactly just football-wise what he had to work on, and I think that's why he's ahead of last year. Does he have to carry himself any differently inside the building as opposed to last year where he was the starter, everybody knew he was the starter, and now he's you know, competing for this spot? Uh, I mean, I think Trey's been the same guy this offseason he was last offseason. Um, Trey's a very special person that I don't think has to try to act anyway. I think guys have the respect of Trey, whether he played any other position, whether he was the one, two, or the three. Um, yeah, obviously, when you're the number one quarterback and you've done that and had experience, that carries more weight. But um, also, when you're number one quarterback and you haven't played, 
that stuff still isn't real until you go out there and do it. It's that's all just outside perception. So Trey's been the same since he's been here. The guys respect the hell, hell out of him, um, and they'll continue to do that. The, the finger issue have a domino effect where you know it affected his arm to the point where it wasn't a natural motion anymore, and that maybe where some of the fatigue or soreness. Yeah, at all that, that everything. If it was a hip that bothered him, it would lead to everything. So, I mean, your throwing motion is your whole body is connected from the ground up, similar to golf swing. So, anything that gets thrown off it can definitely adjust you. I mean, adjust things. And when you overcompensate it, whatever it is, watch any quarterback throughout the year. Um, that's when things start to hurt, and then you got to go back and recalibrate it. Kyle, is this the strongest quarterback room you've had since being the coach of the 49ers? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to compare it to other years, but. I mean, we got three guys. We got two guys who are talented enough to be taken in the top five of the draft, and we have another guy who um, played like it last year. So uh, I like the three guys we got, and I've always been a fan of Brandon Allen. Um, just watching him throughout his career, and to be able to get him in here, also, I feel real fortunate with our four. How's Bob pretty doing on his recovery? Uh, he's doing good. Still staying the same. Uh, yeah. Yep. On schedule. Will he, will he be in that throwing program here in the next week or so? Yeah, he's, I think he's allowed to throw sometime next week. Like a veteran presence, he's still young, or is he kind of a younger quarterback still? In your mind? Um, I mean, I met Sam just when he came out of college, just interviewing him at Indy. Um, he's he, then he seemed like he had a veteran presence. I mean, just the way he carries himself. I think whether he's in a football building or whoever his peers are off the field, um, and he seems almost like the same guy I met four years ago. So. He is a little bit more of a veteran being in a couple places, but Sam's come in here with, to me, being the same guy he's always been. That's why he's had such a good reputation. And uh, he's come in here acting like he's learning everything from scratch, which he is, and trying to act like a rookie in that way because it is all new to him. He doesn't want to make any assumptions. And he's been awesome in phase one and phase two, trying to just do techniques he's not used to and things like that. And it's been cool that he put the work in in those two phases that uh, he's been able to use some of it here in these last two practices. You were looking at him at a call. Did you he was a mobile quarterback, yes. not, you know, not running around like crazy. Is that a big, a big feature in what you like about him now? Can you get some of that in, in, in him this season? Yeah, I mean, that all happens usually with reactions and stuff. I mean, there's two types of mobile quarterbacks. I mean, is it a type that you try to des design runs for? Or is there a type who's got the athletic ability or just knack for making some off-schedule plays? And um, I think that, um, his knack for off-schedule plays has always been good. Uh, when something's not there and he feels space in the pocket and he doesn't hesitate to run, uh, he's been able to do it very well. Um, you know, that's usually a bonus. I mean, you, you want that anytime you have that. But you also got to be very good at the quarterback position, too. And um, Sam bringing that element is something that it helps a lot of stuff, as long as he doesn't miss the other elements with it. And I think that's something you saw with Brock a, a good amount last year when he came in. I mean, people want to think of Brock as a runner, but he is quick. He is athletic in the pocket. And he makes plays very similar to the way Sam does scrambling. And um, that's what we see in Sam, too. It's a moving target. But both you and John have mentioned training camp for Brock. Does that? I mean, conceivable he could be ready at the start of training camp. Yeah, it's, the re it's not really a moving target. It's that only God knows, and it's all estimates. So it depends what quote people have got from me. But, I mean, we're hoping for week one, and I feel pretty optimistic about that. Um, that's what we're hoping for. He'll be ready to play in week one, and um, usually that doesn't mean that's the day he comes back. Usually you got to come before that to make that goal, and that's kind of the goal we're hoping for, and don't have any reason to think differently. Excuse me. You're missing a few guys out there. Sorry. Uh, but are you generally pleased with the level of participation and energy today? Oh, yeah. I'm real pleased with it. I mean, it's always different. I mean, it's always different for O-line and D-line because just the way it is now, um, it's hard for us to set up for those guys to get as much. Um, so it is more of a passing deal and skill position type thing. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I think we had five guys not here. So, um, I mean, I want it to be 100%, but pretty realistic with that. And I mean, I'll take five. Yeah, I communicate with all of them, so I got a pretty good idea. Your thoughts to the new kickoff role past today? Um, I mean, probably the same as all the other special teams coach. I mean, when you don't have experience of it, and you don't know which way it's going to go. Um, and I think the point is for probably to eliminate more kickoffs and stuff, which is for safety. So if that's the case, then I think everyone's for that. But you know. Just not sure that it is. So we'll have to see how it plays out now and how it goes and how we adjust to it. But um, that's the rule now. So now 
we'll start trying to make estimates about what our philosophies will be, but any philosophy will be developed through the experience of watching how it works out throughout the year. You said at the Dwight Clark event that uh, Brock was working out with a towel. Can you explain what, what exactly he's doing with the towel to sort of mimic the, the throwing motion? Yeah, just, I mean, everything that we work on when it comes for the NFL guys throwing just is usually from the ground up and how to time their feet, their drops, their eyes, and everything. Um, I rarely even look at where the ball goes. <laughs> and like, you just expect it to be there. And these are NFL quarterbacks. So it's tough when you, you can't pick up the weight of a ball and throw because your elbow, how do you work at everything else? And um, Brock's healthy in every other aspect. And he can't move his arm. We just don't want to put that weight on it. So for Brock to still be able to do his drops, all his footwork and stuff, you want to be able to simulate a throwing motion. And that's hard with nothing in your arm. So he uses a towel instead. And uh, that's what a lot of quarterbacks do. And, you try to throw every day and work on things every day, but you don't want to wear your arm down. So sometimes you use a towel, sometimes you use a football, and Brock's just in a situation where he only can use a towel right now. You also mentioned the Dwight Clark legacy event that Trey Lance had cleaned up his base a little bit when he throws. Could you explain a little bit what that means? Uh, it means playing with your feet wider apart, always being in a position to throw. When you're a quarterback, your feet aren't together. Um, when you turn into a runner, your feet are together and you look to run. But then it takes you a second and a half to throw where defenders can tee off on and things like that. And um, it's about always being in, having to be in a certain position to throw in. Um, so when the O-line is bad, you're not one of those guys who's just going to get sacked every time the O-line's bad. Uh, you know how to get rid of the ball or you know how to turn into a runner and go. And that has to do with how you balance your feet out, how far you keep them apart, and how you can progress in a pocket. Any newcomers stand out in particular to you today? Not really. Just two days. So, I mean... Even if they did, I make sure I don't even say anything to the coaches because I've coached too much to, to get very excited about guys on day one and not feel the same way on day three and, and vice versa. So it's early out there and some of what OTAs is like for the most part, but we'll have a better idea as we get towards the end of this. And then that's the best part because we get away for 40 days. And I've also learned do not make any concrete decisions because um, you get away for 40 days and you come back and that's when you really see uh, who got better or worse and who's really going to make a play for this team. All right. Thanks, guys.